Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you for watching. Ivan Velasquez here. Um, I have some awesome information to reveal. Um, I, um, as you guys know, I've made videos on um, experimentation with, you know, a vegan keto diet, um, different strategies. I talked about the circadian rhythms of blood sugar control, not eating too late, um, like particularly past nine um, or last meal around eight or earlier would be better. Um, but I stumbled onto something that I knew was, it's, it's an underrated factor, and it's HISS, or um, also fitness level, but basically HISS. Now, I know HIT's important, but, you know, HIT can kind of be hit or miss, <laughs> no pun intended, when it comes to um, regulating blood sugar. And we're talking about optimizing blood sugar, not just fasting blood sugar, but also post-meal blood sugar, and just overall blood sugar. Um, and just these last two weeks, I've, um, well, first off, let me just tell you how I stumbled on, on this little discovery. I did, a, I did a fitness test on myself to see what my recovery heart rate fitness was, and it was lower than I was expecting. So that was like a motivator for me to like, you know, extend my intervals in cardio. A lot of times I do hit, I do 20 to 30 second intervals and so forth, right? Well, that would kind of just, my blood sugar would be, sometimes it would be lower, other times it would be higher. Now, the reason why it'd be lower, it just depends on the workout, but it also depends on a lot of factors, what you ate before and so forth, and also just, you know, stress level too, actually. Um, it, it's complex. So the point is, is that when I did HIT, sometimes it would come down, the HIT workout was effective. When it would go up, it would mean basically that my body was breaking down uh, stored glucose, also known as glycogen. Um, and sometimes adrenaline can break down, you know, stored glycogen. That's what happens with intense exercise. But if you don't do it long enough, then theoretically, this is what I think, you're not going to um, oxidize it or actually burn it. So it's just going to be broken down and it's just going to be elevated in your blood. Um, again, I mean, not like highly elevated, but not as low as I want it. So I've extended those intervals. So now instead of it being hit, I guess, you, I mean, it's hiss. I've been doing three to four minute um, high intensity intervals, and we're talking probably getting my heart rate up to like 150 and maintaining it there, or around 150 to 170, just kind of in that range. October of 2016, I was doing bike ride. You know, the weather, it was better. It's cold now, but uh, in this time of year, in January 2017, not many like events and races and whatnot. Plus, it's good to have an uh, off-season anyway to recover and kind of paradise. It's the whole point of kind of variety and so forth to so avo avoid overtraining. The point I'm trying to make here is that, number one, in October, I was doing hiss. I was on the bike. I was doing like long rides, right? And I was doing, I did one triathlon. And my blood sugar was just like, it was just optimal. It's just like that in, in that video, and you'll see it right here. Um, you can go back to it. The readings were ridiculous. I had like a, a, a one morning I had 78 was my fasting. And then I had like a bowl of oatmeal. And I think it was like an hour later, it was 78. Now, of course, I worked out a little bit. But even still, that's just like insane regulation. Um, now, when I got away from that, it, my, my, my readings got a little higher, a high normal, I should say, in the 90s. And, some, and I had a couple spikes. Um, after eating sweet potatoes. But um, in these last two weeks, my readings have been back to kind of in that, in that 80 range and um, in the low 90s and, and even a couple in the 70s. And th the thing that's been doing it is hiss. The three to four minutes on the bike going at, you know, keeping my heart rate at the 150, 170, and then I've been on a step mill, kind of stacking it. So it's like probably a total of eight to... 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes of, of high intensity, steady state exercise. And that's all it took. That's all it took. It, at least right now, this is a short term like glimpse of what's going on. Of course, I've been lifting weights too. That helps. I think it's a comprehensive thing. But for the intensive purpose of this, of this video, there's two factors. Number one, it's the interval has to be long enough to not only break down blood sugar, but to also utilize it. Um, and, and then also, um, and then also the impact on fitness level, right? So high intensity steady state exercise will boost fit, fitness level. Again, we're not talking about 30 minutes, 20, we're talking about like literally like four to 12 minutes range. In fact, you look at some studies below, they looked at 14 minutes of activity and they found it's very effective. Now they probably didn't do what I'm doing. Uh, maybe they did, I don't know. But the point is it kind of has to be moderate to vigorous um, not like hit, not like extreme vigorous, but vigorous enough, it, it, it's been working. 
it, it's really remarkable. In fact, I'm going to see if I could take you guys uh, through a, a little bit of it right now. All right, you guys, so I'm going to listen to my music while I do this, and I'm going to show you kind of pretty much what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm gonna get my heart rate soon. But my goal is to get over 17, maybe 18 miles an hour. Steady state, high intensity, one step more. Here's my heart rate. Right now it's hanging around 150 ish. Alright, you guys, so I'm just going to do a little bit of weights here, just some side dumbbell raises. We're going to go one at a time. So I think that'll be it. I gotta, I gotta train somebody. So otherwise my workout would have been longer. But um, so that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time. All right, guys. So this is just post workout, and this is two hours after uh, my breakfast, which I had oatmeal, um, and then I had fruit in there. I even put a little bit of uh, honey in there. So we'll see what my uh, blood sugar is after the workout and after two, two hours after the breakfast. All right, so there we go. That's usually a good sound. Does that say 82? 85, 85, so that's two hours after a big bowl of steel cut oats with a little bit of fenugreek seeds. Again, it's not like I'm trying to be like, oh, I'm high carb and blood sugar is awesome. No, uh, there's a science to it. Fenugreek seeds have a natural blood sugar lowering effect, and when you mix the meal with that with steel cut oats, it's going to kind of dampen the steel cut oats. That's the science you get from my channel. You're not going to get that from any other channel. You may, and maybe I haven't come across those channels. And my channel only has 7,000 plus subs, which is, is much more than it has, which, you know, it's, my channels continue to grow. But point is, guys, that's a lower read than usual. I mean, that's phenomenal, especially after oatmeal. Uh, two hours, it m might even be a little less than two hours. But uh, hiss is unbelievable. Um, high intensity, steady state. And I did a little bit of weight training. So um, anyhow, thank you guys for watching and tune in next time. All right, guys, so just, just to wrap this up, okay, just to bring it all together. Um, high intensity steady state exercise, um, it appears to be, it works consistently, remarkably consistently, every time I can count on it working to um, optimize blood sugar control. Now, again, back in October, I was doing bike rides and I did one triathlon and those are, and I was on the bike, we're talking at least 45 minutes and up, upwards to almost two hours. 
and going hard the whole time, you know, because being on a bike when you're riding, like in a pace line or outdoors, it's so motivating. And that's the key. Now, that's a little bit, um, I guess, unrealistic to expect to do that, you know, to, to manage blood sugar or whatever, or to optimize it. So what I've found was these last two weeks, I've been doing at least minimum three minutes of going hard, three minutes, maybe three to five minutes. And I stack two different activities. So it's been the bike and the step mill. And I've been doing a, a few uh, uh, Tabatas, like four minute uh, hit. Um, it's a specific hit workout uh, designed by a Japanese researcher. It, it was named after him. I've been doing that on the fan bike, but just today I just did five minutes on the, uh, on the bike at a high intensity. As you saw my heart rate, it was the max was about 172 and the average was in the 150s, I think. And on the step mill, I did four minutes and my heart rate was in the 140 to 160 range. So that's nine minutes of exercise, uh, keeping my heart rate between 140 to 170 consistently the whole time. And I believe that that allows the body to actually um, not only break down blood sugar because you're going to get a surge of adrenaline with high intensity, but if you do it long enough, and nine minutes is not a long time. In fact, it could, probably could have just done the four to five minutes and it would have worked. But I just, I, I think for me, I think the magic number, I think in general, to really kind of hone in on it. Is, is probably somewhere is around 8 to 10 minutes. It, it's remarkable. It, it works. Um, so I'm going to continue to do it. Uh, we'll, we'll time test it. But it, it's, it, there's a correlation between high intensity steady state and blood sugar regulation. As I said in October, my readings were unbelievable. Um, and, and then after that, between November and December, I got away from it. And the readings kind of uh, started to creep up a little bit. Um, still in the normal range, but towards a little bit higher in the normal range. Um, and so this month, uh, January, I've brought back the high intensity steady state and it's voila, it's unbelievable. So anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I'll continue to do the research, um, just observational and, and so forth. Um, tune in next time.